Hello everyone, welcome to the Organizational Theory and Design course. Today, we'll continue with Chapter 3, Fundamentals of Organizational Design. In this chapter, we start with explaining organizational design and processes of the organization. Then, forms of departmentalization will be analyzed. Then, we'll talk about the essentials of interorganizational forms. And we'll finish up with theories on organizational design. Let's start with organizational design and processes of the organization. Organizational design is the whole specification of strategy, processes, and structure of the organization. Processes include coordination, control, and incentives. They aim to help achieve a configuration of mental and physical effort that leads to good organizational performance. Coordination is the process of lining up the activities of people or their units to achieve a state of integration. Integration means cohesion and synergy between different roles or units in an organization. Their activities are separate but interdependent in the process of creating value. Coordination requirements are more pressing than ever as organizations respond to globalization and intense competition. Both the globalization of markets and production necessitate diverse coordination mechanisms. Control is a process through which management can initiate and regulate activities such that their results fit in with the goals and expectations held by management. To control an organization effectively, managers need to decide which information is essential, how they will gain that information, and how they can and should respond to it. Reward is allocating incentives for managers and employees to improve performance and meet their goals. Managers and employees evaluate how well previous goals were met, set new goals, and establish rewards for meeting the new targets. There are four basic types of incentive systems. 1. Personal pay. 2. Skill-based pay. 3. Bonus-based incentives. And 4. Profit sharing. Let's move on to forms of departmentalization. A fundamental characteristic of organization structure is departmentalization, which is the basis for grouping positions into departments and departments into the entire organization. Managers make choices about how to use the chain of command to group people together to form their work. There are five significant forms of departmentalization. Simple, functional, multidivisional, and matrix. Small organizations usually involve simple forms characterized by entirely flexible relationships with limited differentiation and almost no hierarchy. Small size limits specialization in simple forms because everyone must share in performing tasks as needs arise. Simple forms are characteristics of newly formed organizations or permanently small organizations. They also occur within prototype laboratories, product design or project teams, in cross-functional management groups, and many subunits of large organizations. A function is a group of people working together who have similar skills or use the same kind of knowledge, tools, or techniques to perform their jobs. A functional form consists of all the departments that an organization requires to produce its goods or services. The form that organizations most commonly adopt to solve the control problems that result from producing many different kinds of products in many different locations for many different types of customers is the multidivisional form. A multidivisional form groups functions according to the specific demands of products, markets, or customers. The goal behind a change into a multidivisional form is to create smaller, more manageable subunits within an organization. Sometimes, an organization's structure needs to be multifocused in both the function and the product, geography, or customer at the same time. A matrix form enables implementing both divisional and functional forms simultaneously. 
A matrix form often is the answer when organizations find that the functional, divisional, and geographic structures combined with coordination mechanisms will not work. The matrix is a secure form of coordination. Now, we can talk about interorganizational forms. When companies enter different industries, which have either few or no similarities with each other, the multidivisional form becomes inadequate. That is why these companies create a business group, which is a collaboratively coordinated set of legally independent companies. The base for the reason for collaboration between the companies can be joint ownership, products, and financial or family bonds. Usually, there is a core entity which controls or coordinates the member companies financially or managerially. In the 1980s, because of decreasing costs of finding external suppliers through advancements in information and communication technologies, some companies began to subcontract a part of their activities. Gradually, a new organizational form emerged called the network form that combined legally separate companies along a value chain into a loosely integrated whole. There are three types of a network form the dynamic, stable, and internal network forms. In the dynamic network, independent companies along the value chain form temporary alliances from among a large pool of potential partners. Our last topic for today is theories on organizational design. As we mentioned in our first chapter, the contingency theory argues that to contribute to successful overall performance, how a company is organized must adjust the features of the environment, size, technology, and strategy. According to the contingency theory, there are two types of organizational design, the mechanistic and organic organizational designs. The effectiveness of each type of organizational design is dependent on the environment of the organization. Larger organizations tend to develop mechanistic designs of the organization, but with some degree of decentralization. They tend to adopt more formalized systems of control, whereas smaller ones tend to rely on personal relationships to maintain control. The studies have found that there is a connection between size, formalized structure, and performance and this connection is the most robust for companies operating in relatively stable environments. There is also the configuration theory. The configuration theory conceptualizes organizations as holistic entities, both composed of a set of subsystems and yet still distinguished from components alone. Subcomponents are related to each other in ways that yield a coherent whole. These holes are often referred to as ideal types, archetypes, or modes. A configuration implies a multidimensional combination of work contingencies, design and performance elements that commonly occur together. The organization with a simple structure is typically a new, small startup company. It consists mainly of a top manager and workers. The organization is managed and coordinated by direct supervision from the top rather than by middle managers or support departments. However, organizations with a divisionalized form are mature companies that are extremely large and subdivided into product or market or customer groups, as mentioned previously in the section of the multidivisional form. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 3 of the Organizational Theory and Design course. Goodbye and see you in our next program, Chapter 4.